Let's rise up on our feet and give God praise for all these testimonies. That was practically a near-death experience that God brought her back. And I'm believing God that anything dead in your life will come back to life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you get me a more sanctified microphone? This one has a battery, battery problem. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I said amen. Hosea chapter 9, verse 14. Give them, O God. What will thou give them? Give them a miscarrying womb and a dry breast. That's a twofold prayer. That's a twofold prayer. Give them, O Lord, what will thou give them? <laughs> this was a deadly prayer. This was a deadly prayer. He said, Lord, this is what I want. I want to do something to them. But Lord, hold on. Let me tell you what to do them oh lord but hold on what will thou give them give them a miscarrying wound and a dry breast not a miscarried womb miscarrying as they are planning about it as they are planning about as they are planning about now this prayer is a two-fold prayer is a prayer that handles both process and success miscarry womb for what they are planning dry breast for what they are planned so that whatever they've already planned they cannot nurse it to life give them a miscarrying womb and a dry breast. it doesn't matter where they are hiding smoke them out oh my god amos 9 3 amos 9 3 god said it doesn't matter where they are hiding amos 9 3 though they hide themselves on the top of camel I will search them. I will take them out. Though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, I will command the serpent, it shall bite them. Oh, oh, you've not seen that portion? You've not seen it before? Okay, read it in the message translation. Read it in the message translation. If they hide at the top of Kameh, I will find them and bring them back. If they die, to the bottom of the ocean I will send dragon to swallow them up good news and uh, good news translation and TPT mm. if they hide at the top of coming I will search for them and I will catch them if they hide at the listen 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 if they hide from me at the bottom of the sea I will command the sea monster to bite them. Though they hide on the summit of Mount Carmel, I will track them down, take them from there. Though they hide from my, from my sight on the floor of the sea, from there I will command the serpent, it will bite them. I mean TPT. Now, let me say this to everyone under the sound of my voice. There is no one that will escape today. No one will escape. Give them, oh God, what will thou give them? Give them a miscarrying womb. Every agenda of hell against my life and ministry, listen, in the name of Jesus, I stop the process of the plan. I destroy the success of the plan. I abort the process of the plan. I destroy the success of the plan. I abort the process of the plan. I destroy the success of the plan. I abort the process of the plan. I destroy the success of the plan. Are you ready to pray? 
lift your right and say in the name of Jesus say it loud and clear in the name of Jesus as I begin to pray every evil agenda of hell against my life and ministry I abort the process of the plan I stop the success of the plan I abort the process of the plan I stop the success of the plan open your mouth and fire prayers Jesus. Oh, Ratamanda Sakalias. My own strength fail me. Friends and families turn their backs on me. Lord, you stood by me. You never let me down. My own strength fail me. Friends and families turn their backs on me. Lord, you stood by me. You never let me down. And my own strength fail me. Friends and families turn their backs on me. Lord, you stood by me. We love you, Jesus. We love you. The fragrance of my worship rose up to the Father. Noises, thunders, earthquake were the response to my worship. The fragrance of my worship rose up to the Father. Noises, thunders, lightning were the response to my worship. The fragrance of my worship rose up to the Father. Noises, thundering lightning were the response to my worship. The fragrance of my worship rose up to the Father. Noises, thunders, lightning were the response to my worship. First it was fragrance and it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. This is now in my battles. Oh, first it was red and it turned to fire. And it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. My worship is my weapon. This is now in my battles. 
This is how we my battle. This is how we my battle. Oh, first it was fragrance. First it was fragrance. Hands of fire. Then it turned to fire. I worship this my weapon. I worship this my weapon. This is how we my battle. This is how we my battle. Oh, first it was fragrance. First it was fragrance. And the tons of fire. Then it turned to fire. This is my weapon. My worship is my weapon. This is how we my battle. This is how we my battle. Thank you, my Father. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Clap those hands for the Lord as you take your seat. This is how we my battles. And first it was fragrance. And it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. This is how we win my battle. My worship is my weapon. And this is how I win my battle. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There is a concentrated presence of God in this place. Thank you, Father. Thank you. My worship is my web. When I went back, I had, you know, I'm, I'm doing so much, so much. So, I, when I have time, I just try to rest a bit. I'm doing quite a lot. And um, I do everything I do without reserve. I don't, I don't keep a reserve energy somewhere. I just do everything I do. So I had a short revelation just some hours ago. Saw myself kneeling down. And I saw a throne. And I was asking the Lord. I was just worshiping on the throne. I was asking the Lord in that revelation, what is this? He said, that's me. That's himself. And I said, where is this? You see, that's the conference. And I said, I don't understand. He said, I'm seated. I'm seated. He said, so what they want, what they want, if they ask, I'll give it. Anything. And I, I just had a smile. I just had a smile. I saw myself worshiping and I was asking him. I said, where is it? That's the conference. And there, I'm seated. So anything is possible. Whatever you desire, it's possible. Just say it and take it. It's possible. My worship is my weapon. This is our battle. I will glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, let us glorify, let us glorify, Emmanuel, let us glorify, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Jesus. Thank you, my Father. We acknowledge your presence in our midst. In Jesus' name. Amen. Clap those hands and take your seat. Popular demand. There's so much pressure that some 
two top ministers of the Lord in this country who we consider as fathers said to me that <laughs> the message I started today, I must finish it tomorrow. <laughs> And I said to they say they say that was thunder, brimstone, lightning. So I said, I don't understand, sir. He said that was good. Say, but we are with our pen. We are sitting together. That thing, that thing, that thing. Tomorrow completed. I said, but I have something to share. So don't worry. Keep that one next time. You are still going to be in this for a long time. Share that thing. And it takes it takes elderly wisdom to be able to pick that. He said, if if that was what started, we were just imagining what was left. So what you are going to do, anything you prepare to share tomorrow morning, um, keep it. There will be another conference. Or add it to what you see. But you must finish that thing that you started this morning. <laughs> and these are, I mean, the brackets of grandfathers in ministry. And I said, okay, sir. I promise. Okay. We are, see, we are watching today. Tell them we said so. <laughs> so I'm telling them now <laughs> that we said so that you should finish that thing you started this morning they said it was thunder lightning and brimstone i don't know what that means <laughs> amen zechariah chapter 3 and verse 1 to 5 i'll read verse 1 you read verse 2 that's what we do here we'll read verse 3 read verse 4 we'll get to verse 5 we all read it together zechariah chapter 3 i'll read from verse 1 and it showed me joshua the high priest Standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Read verse 2. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Read verse 4. Verse 5. Let's read it together. And I said, Let them set a firm might upon his head. So they set a fine might upon his head and clothed him with garments and the angel of the Lord stood by the priests and the encounter. The priests and the encounter. Men of impact are nothing but men of encounters. There are no great men in themselves. Men of God who have made indelible mark in their days are nothing in themselves. They are men connected and traceable to an encounter. Never feel or get to a point in your life when you feel nothing can work out. Never get to a point in your life when you feel finances cannot work out. Never get to a point in your life when you feel marriages cannot work out. Do you know, pastors, that there is one woman in the Bible that I, I advise every woman to pick from her traits, not from her heart, but to pick from her traits. She's called Delilah. Delilah was the smartest. That is why she brought down the strongest. Samson was the strongest man on the face of the earth. For a woman to close his ministry, there is something she knows. There is something women need to learn from there. One of the strengths of Delilah, Delilah was persuasive. She was a never give up woman. She was persuasive. She was persuasive. She knew how to pursue a target. One of the strength of Delilah, she was tolerative. Samson lied. She still put his head on his lap. Samson lied again. She kept the head on her lap. Samson lied again. She kept the head on her lap. Just one mistake from your husband, you have thrown him out of the house. Just one error from that man, you have kicked him out. Delilah, that Samson lying. But there was something she wanted to extract. She tolerated him. Am I talking to somebody right now? 
Delilah knew what she wanted. Delilah was patient. She knew what she wanted. The problem we have is that we throw away certain stories without learning from them. This morning, I was talking to us about the powers of altar. Don't let nobody lie to you. Don't let nobody tell you that your lineage is not important. Don't let nobody tell you that your family background is not important. If you are a preacher and you do not believe the importance of family connection, of genealogy, then open your Bible as a preacher and tear off Matthew chapter 1. Because Matthew chapter 1 says nothing but genealogy. This begat this. This begat this. Let us trace the history of Christ. If Jesus, the Son of God, a full chapter was open to trace his history, to trace his genealogy, to trace where he come from, what makes you think as a minister of God, your genealogy is not important, your lineage is not important, where you come from is not important, who better is not important. If you don't understand the mystery of how to handle altars, you may end up like James who was killed and yet Peter escaped. If you don't know how to handle altars, you may end up like Elijah who died of sickness and yet Elijah was carried away. If you don't know how to handle altars, you may die and become a victim of the battles of life. Am I communicating right now? If you don't know how to handle altars, you may end up like Adam. He died. Eve, she died. But Enoch escaped. I am here to make a decree upon somebody's life as you hear the sound of my voice. As a bird is escaped out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and you have escaped. Somebody shout, I have escaped. Shout, I have escaped. Take your seat, let me talk to you. And he showed me. I don't have to run through that. Revelation 1, 5 and 6. Revelation 5 verse 10. We are priests and kings and we shall reign on the earth. We are priests and kings. A priest is an intermediary. A priest is a get in, a get, an intermediary between God and man, man and God. A priest is that which reports God to man and reports man to God. The priest is that which reports God to man. When he goes into his closet, he reports the people to God. When he comes out of his closet, he reports God to the people. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2 verse 9, he said, we are royal priests to the holy nation, a peculiar people called out of darkness. He said, into his marvelous life. So we are priests. Somebody say, I am a priest. Come on, say, I am a priest. I can't hear you. I am a priest. Say, I am a priest. But you must get to understand that the devil is not going to allow you manifest your priesthood without putting up a fight. The devil will not allow you manifest your priesthood without contending you. And do you know one of the problems we don't understand? The battles on sin are more than the battle sin. Do you know that Israel was not even aware that Balaam was hired against them? We read it. Israel did not read it. We saw it. Israel did not see it. We are aware. Israel was not aware that Balaam was hired against them. Two full chapters. They didn't know what God was doing on their behalf. They didn't know that 21 times God hindered Balaam. They didn't know that 21 altars were raised against them. But God brought it to none. That is how there are many battles that God has saved you from. You are not aware. There are many mountains he brought down for you. You are not aware. There are many valleys that we have exalted. You are not aware. There are many mountains and giants that God swallowed up. You are not aware. Am I talking to somebody here? If you are aware, you will sing this praise all the day long because there are mountains. Twenty-one altars. It got to a point that Balak had to tell Balaam, "Let nothing hinder you from coming." He didn't know God was going to hinder him. Joshua, the high priest. Mm. He said, and he showed me. Somebody said, he showed me. Somebody showed me. This was a priest. Who was to stand as an intermediary between God and man, man and God. Yet he had his own problem. Who would stand for him one of the problems 
that our people don't know from members to fellow pastors to proteges mentees mentors they didn't know that you only answered a call you never said you were perfect they didn't know you only answered the call you never said your family background was pure they didn't know you only answered the call you never told them you come from a good family but now they expect so much perfection rather than interceding for you he showed me joshua he showed me joshua there are so many things people don't understand if you try to explain to them they can't get the true picture except god shows them he showed me joshua if only certain people can understand your humanity they will know you don't need to ask them for help before they help you he showed me joshua many times you've been wanting to show yourself to people trying to explain to them the challenges you're confronted with but god said not anymore he wants to show them he wants to open their eyes to see the vacuum in your life that they are created to feel he wants to show them he wants to show them certain dimensions in your life that he has created them to occupy he showed me joshua the high priest he showed me joshua he showed me joshua the high priest standing joshua was standing and interceding for people and he was not aware of his own battle one of the biggest problem of gifted men is that they don't see their own problems one of the problem how do you explain in first kings chapter 13 a young prophet who could profess her accurately and he was not aware when the prophecy was directed at him he couldn't decode it he said the lord just told me now that you should eat you should take something <laughs> god already told him before don't take anything because god knew what his weakness was you am a child of god god always wants you ahead of time your spirit always bears witness but your insensitivity your insensitivity is your undoing how come he could not decode that prophecy that concerned him great men had received for themselves and that is why our proximity our closeness with god our intimacy with the holy ghost is what exposes us to us somebody say reveal me to me say reveal me to me open my eyes to see me your proximity with God a young man asked his father he said what is the size of God the father said whoa he says God big is God large the father said it depends it depends tell me the size of God give me a stretch word what is the size of God he said it depends and he pointed to the sky he said to the sun can you see that aircraft what is that he said it's a plane but I can hardly see it it's small he said okay the next day he took that son of his to the airport and he got to the airport what is this he said it's a plane wow it's big he said that's how God is when you're close to him it's big when you go far from him he becomes small so God is God can be defined by our proximity to him our intimacy is what reveals his identity our intimacy is what defines his almightiness our intimacy is what reveals the fullness of the Godhead bodily am I talking to somebody right now some of us do not understand that what we need is not about being addicted to a mentality of problem solving you are always after God to meet your needs have you studied your Bible Bible, this will shock you the Bible says and the wind was tempestuous and the wind was posterous and in the midst of the wind Jesus was asleep true of us true of us he was asleep the wind was posterous he was asleep the disciples said carest thou not that we perish he awoke ah, the wind was posterous he was asleep the disciples said carest thou not they said master somebody said master Carest thou not that we perish. He awoke. 
But the wind was boisterous. The wind, the intensity of the wind, I believe the velocity of the wind was heavier than the voice of the disciples. But when the wind was boisterous, he was asleep. When the disciples said, Carest thou not that we perish, he awoke. Storms don't move God, only relationships do. Storms don't move God, only relationship moves him. Your proximity, your intercourse, your intermingling with the Spirit of God is what sets heaven at attention, not your problem. God is used to problem. He's used to solving problems. But he desires intimacy. Am I, am I communicating here? Joshua hear me and hear me clearly every man that is a high flyer in this kingdom is a product of encounter great men are traceable to their encounters your encounters make you your encounters make you a champion or your encounters can also mar you if they are not properly handled because the grace that makes you can break you the grace that uplifts you can shift you if they are not properly handled the same grace can taunt you when you go against that same grace am i talking to somebody right now am i talking to somebody now am i talking to somebody now am i talking to somebody now battles are real battles are real battles are real the spirit world is real when i saw the king that desired sarah i thought that king was immoral and reckless until i saw another king that desired rebecca i say why why this pattern the same king the same the same nation the same nation the same abimelech desired sarah another one desired rebecca it was a pattern it was a pattern am i talking to somebody here because the spirit world is real abraham lied as he was in there as he came he lied jacob was in there when jacob came when jacob came he was a lie himself he was a definition of lies when his children came all of them gathered and lied they lied to him and 17 years they maintained the lie now it is wrong to lie but it takes capacity to maintain a lie 17 years of maintaining one lie without without blinking without shaking am i talking to somebody here it takes an encounter and sometimes when the enemy raises up his head to fight you if only the enemy knows that every time the devil raises up his standard is moving us closer to god's plan and purpose for us you know when they took the garment of joseph the brothers made a mistake they took the garment of joseph and they did it is in blood what an error because it was the generation of blood sacrifice anywhere god sees blood is pierced there so they took his coat of many color and dipped it in blood if only they know they were preserving him when he was thrown into the pit it was that blood that the lord saw and even in the dry pit god preserved him because he remembered he had a coat of many color that was deep in blood when he entered the prison he was preserved because there was blood on his coat and even in egypt he was preserved it was that blood sometimes if only your enemies know that what they throw at you is making you tough and unveiling to you a dimension of god for if they had known they would not have crucified the lord of glory i mean no! all things work together for good to them that love god and to them who are they called according to his purpose lift your one shot fire 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 lift your one shot fire 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 lift your one shot fire yeah, 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 yeah. the first encounter you need is open eyes somebody shout open eyes see my eyes must open 
can you say my eyes must open I want to offend you can I offend you can I offend you I want to offend you to affect you it's an error for a priest not to see you don't need to be in the prophetic to see being called into ministry you must have a seeing eye how can you as a priest you don't see for yourself and the destinies of men are committed to your hand what will you do when they ask you what the next line of action is can you see how confused you are some error for a priest to be blind i'm going to get into that maybe tomorrow or i'm going to show you the criteria for being in ministry it was defined an error joshua was ministering to people and he was carrying garments that were filthy he had satan contending and he was not aware Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Anoint my eyes with eyes serve. And can I say this to you? A seen priest operates in dimensions. In dimensions, you see, you hear, you perceive. Hello? Because if you see alone and not hear, you will make errors. Uh, if you perceive, and not see you make error it has to be complete your your spiritual perception has to be sharp can i can i illustrate that to you isaac said what is this this is the voice this is the voice of jacob but the skin of esau I hear because I can't see it's affecting what I'm touching I hear but I can't see that's why some hear and still move into error because they can't see I'm hearing this is the voice of Jacob but my eyes are dim my eyes are dim because I'm full of age so what I'm touching is confusing listen to me when you don't see even if you hear what you touch might become heretical what you touch might become confusing so God of heaven I don't just want to hear I want to see I want to see open down my eyes Psalm 119 verse 18 that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law Psalm 34 verse 5 and they looked up to him and their faces were enlightened and they were not ashamed Jeremiah 1 11 and 12 what seest thou I have seen an almond tree for thou hast seen well for I will hasten my word to perform it Jeremiah 24 verse 3 what seest thou Zechariah 5 verse 2 what seest thou Zechariah 4 and verse 2 what seest thou Amos 8 verse 2 what seest thou Amos 7 verse 8 what seest thou Matthew 6 22 the lamp of the body is the eye if the eye is single thy whole body shall be full of light second king 6 17 open his eyes that he might see and he opened his eyes and he saw i refuse to be blind i refuse to walk in darkness i refuse to walk in error what does it mean to see it means to walk 
seeking illumination. It means to receive light. Ecclesiastes 11 7. Truly, light is sweet. For it's a good thing for the eyes to behold the sun. Ecclesiastes 2 13. Light excelleth darkness as wisdom excelleth folly. Psalm 36 verse 9. For with thee, O Lord, is the fountain of light. For in thy light shall we see light. John chapter 1. From verse 1 it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was light, and the light was the life of man. The light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness of the light that through him everyone might believe. If you go further, he says, This is that true light that lighteneth every man that cometh it from the world. He came to his own, and his own received him not. He said, But as many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, not of the will of the flesh, but the will of the Father. The Bible says, The world became flesh and dwelt among men, and we bear the glory of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. Open my eyes, open my eyes. It's an error for a matter to be brought to me, and I can see what is wrong. Open my eyes. It's an error to labor in the location, and I don't know how to take the territory. Somebody say, Open my eyes. Everything major that has happened in my life and ministry, I've said it on the altar before it happened. If there's going to be a crisis, I tell our people, we are entering into the year. Last year, I told them, I said, this ministry is going to be very, very attacked this year for two things for money and for power, for the supernatural. I said, we are going to, be, are going to attack us because of wealth, issue of wealth and the supernatural. Those of us in church, did I say that? I said, it's going to be all over the place. Amazing grace, right? I said, it's going to attack all over the place. The level of wealth. So when they were all screaming and complaining about the jets, somebody reminded me. He said, you mentioned it. When they started speaking and wondering about miracle money, somebody said, that's supernatural. Even preachers began to doubt angelic intervention. What we are enjoying, what we are celebrating. He said, I will do a walk in your day that the ears of them that hear you shall tingle. There is a side by me. There is a side by me. There is a realm in God that can only be assessed by the hungry. There is a realm in God that can only be assessed by the passionate. There is a realm in God that is only assessed by hunger. Hunger that bets intimacy. Hunger that bets intimacy. He am a child of God. God does not feel the field. God feels the hungry. God does not lift the standing. God lifts the falling. I will look up to the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Who made the heavens and the earth. Somebody say open my eyes. Joshua was standing. Joshua stood. Hello? But he was not seen. I can preach that for the whole day. Joshua was standing. But he wasn't seen. Joshua did everything it takes to see. But was not seen. As a matter of fact, when Joshua was being challenged by Satan, the angel of the Lord said, Ah, is this not a brand plucked from the fire? The definition of Joshua's ministry was fire. When he preached, he preaches fire. 
when his ministers he ministers fire but he was blind is this not a blind brand is this not the man who stands on the pulpit and he can practically carry the hall on his head by reason of the power of oratory split speculation more fluent than Plato more fluent than Socrates and Archimedes but yet he is blind yet he can see yet he does not pick signals in the spirit is this not a man who can prophesy and yet still a victim of altars of his background many can even see outside but can see inside am i talking to somebody right now so when i talk about open eyes it's beyond prophecy it's beyond just the gift of the spirit open eyes is seeing the things to do to accelerate to your next level open eyes is seeing the things to do to assess the next opportunity somebody say open my eyes oh say that again open my eyes one more time open my eyes one more time open my eyes is this not a brand so the problem is not that you are lukewarm you are prayerful but you've been bankrupt of encounter you've been bereft of the right encounter you do not you do not communicate fire to your people you don't force them to love God you don't even tell them to love God just be on fire I can't remember sitting my children down my biological children say be on fire no they are just on fire <laughs> because they see their father burning their mother burning they are just on fire because that's what they see that's the only thing they know am I speaking here that's the only thing they know this is the month of October can count how many times this year I have sat down in my sitting room downstairs I don't think it's up to 12 or 15 times and if I sat down at all it's because I want to join them to pray am I speaking to somebody the secret of man is in the secret place the secret of man is in the place of power he that dwelleth there not he that visited there he that dwelleth in the secret place not he that comes there when he has a church service he that dwelleth in the secret place not he that goes to the secret because he has a crusade he that dwelleth in the secret place not he that goes to the secret because he has a revival coming he that dwelleth in the secret place not he that goes to the secret because he's believing God for a new dimension but he that dwells arise go to Bethel and dwell there is an instruction from the Almighty I have one life to live how can I pass through the sands of time and not make the impact that I should make I have one life to live how can I pass through the sands of time someone asked me I was praying with a man of God we were praying together after a while I was lost in prayer when I opened my eyes I noticed he sat down he was looking at me and he was crying so I was worried so I rounded up my prayer and I, what's the problem he said what is the matter I said I don't understand he said what's the matter I said I don't understand sir he said no I'm worried he said what is the problem I said sir I do not understand I thought we are praying he said no this one is not prayer he said I've been watching you 5 minutes 10 minutes 20 minutes you will get tired 30 40 1 hour 1 hour 30 minutes he said I've just been watching you 2 hours he said I sat down I started crying father please do it for him more oh. do it for him more oh. do it for him more oh. i said what he said even if i was god there's no way i would say no he said, i said what he said did you see the ground sweat do you know this place was shaking is why do you pray like that i said to him i said i have one life to live i can't go to herbalist
I can't go to native doctors. I can't arrange miracles. I can't pay anybody to sit on wheelchair. I am I don't have that kind of money. The only source I know is prayer. So I have to hold it with my life. There is no other key. Take your seat. There's no other way to get it done except the place of prayer. I told them yesterday in the Bible study any hunter that goes hunting and comes back with a goat is not a hunter, he's a thief. Because you do not get goat in the bush, you get goat at home. So it's either he bought it or he stole it. He's not a hunter, he's a thief. Anyone that preaches another gospel, he said, Let him be accursed because this is the only one we know. That's why we are conscious. We are checking the errors of our fathers and knowing how to avoid them. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? We are knowing how to avoid them so that ministry does not become a reproach in your hand. So that you don't die in the midst of fame. You don't expire in the midst of glory. Open my eyes. I've always told them in our church, I said, before you somersault, check where you are landing. If you land on a stone, that is the end. So you must look back before you backflip. Am I communicating here? Lift your right hand. Lift your right hand. Lift your right hand before we continue. Say, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, my eyes are open. Take your seat. He showed me. Ah, and he showed me Satan standing on his right hand. This is where and what a lot of us ministers are currently going through. Satan is standing on our right hand. Satan is standing. Do you know when Satan stands on your right hand, no matter your prayer, go to the mountain and return. You meet battle. In fact, the more you pray, the more the battle is complicated because Satan is standing on your right hand. The more you fast, the more there is problem because Satan is standing on your right hand. We saw a man in the Bible that Satan stood at his right hand. His name was Job. When Satan stood at his right hand, he lost everything. Do you know what it means for Satan to stand on your right hand? In Psalm 109, the 6, when the Bible was releasing words and releasing declarations, he says, set down a wicked man over him and let Satan stand at his right hand. Then what begins to happen? Verse 7. When Satan stand at his right hand, verse 7. Bring up verse 7. He said, when he shall be judged, let him be condemned. Let his prayer become sin. The more he's praying, the more God is angry. The more he's fasting, the more God is offended. Because Satan is standing at his right hand. That is why you see in the midst of a powerful service, something catastrophic will happen to the man of God. You hear that he collapsed on the altar. You hear that something happened to a member. You hear that a car was stolen. You hear that a child was carried away. Because Satan is standing at his right hand. There are ministers of God. What is the right hand? The right hand is the place of support. The right hand is the place of assistance. That is why Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. But this time around, Satan is standing at his right hand. That is why there are people who are affecting others and they are not affected. They minister to people, but they don't enjoy the same grace and privilege of answers. They preach the gospel, but there is no impact from the gospel. They minister to the sick, and yet they are sick because Satan is standing at their right hand. That is why we have come to this mountain. We have come. If you read verse 5 he said, and the angel of God stood by him. After the encounter showed up, Satan left his right hand and the angel of God stood by him. We are here 
to displace the devil we are here to say satan you have gone too far you will go no further satan leave my right hand we are here to make a declaration to say to the powers of the air satan leave my right hand somebody shout fire yeah, 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 yeah. And Satan was standing at his right hand. And Satan was standing. So no wonder the fasting. No wonder the praying. You know, there's something that worries me. It worries me. It has worried me. But lately I began to get the cure for it. When I hear some ministers die tragically genuine men of God just die it worried me genuine men of God bedridden it worried me but also I saw men of God who are so worrying Pastor W.F. Kumuyi is 80 he's doing crusades at 80 in fact, he's more active now than 10 years ago. Some of you don't understand why. Don't know why. When you finish, you go. If you don't want to go, be working. Not his sponsors longevity like activity. Paul said, <laughs> you know, one day I had Bishop David, God's servant Bishop David the was talking about the late Archbishop. He said, the Archbishop called his wife one time and said, everything God said I should do, I have finished it. That was the week he died. And he told the wife, I have finished everything God said I should do. And the wife said, please, let me meet you, I'm coming. So when they told Bishop David about it, he said, what did he say? He said, he has finished. So Bishop said, no problem. I won't finish. I, will, I have not finished. So the beauty, 50,000, now he's building a 100,000 or a 150,000 seater. How many? 100? He's building 100,000 seater? He's called, huh? Yes. Okay, whatever. And this building, you just keep walking. So I understood. I was asking the Lord, this man is moved from crusade to at 80! You are just in your 40s. You are buying book on rest. <laughs> 45, you are buying book on rest. May you not be late to rest. <laughs> Auto. <laughs> you are buying book on rest. 45, you are going on vacation. You are buying book on rest. <laughs> And you are listening to men who are telling you rest at this age. Did they rest when they were your age? Did they relax when they were your age? You are reading books on rest. You are reading book, the books that tells you take it easy. You are reading books that tells you you just have to be calm. And just take it slowly. Child of God, you have one life to live. Revival came when people troubled heaven. Check all the moves of God. Every revival we see, it was a it was a product of protracted pain. Is it the Azusa Street revival? Is it the Chasparam revival? Every revival we see came as a result of protracted, extended, prolonged fervency, velocity, aggression of prayer. Let no one tell you to rest at this point. Am I communicating right now? I was talking to my father in the Lord about something about fasting. And I said to him, I said, Daddy, in those days, 100 days, 100 days was so, was nothing for me. Nothing. I said, but today, these days, before you know it, you will stumble into one program, consciously or consciously. 
Everybody is around you. You have eaten something. You have drank something. You do 40 days. You do 40 days. You want to do 100, 120. You can't anymore. I say, I don't know, daddy. You know, just 40 days here and there. 40 days, one month. And he said, ah, that's bad. Eh? He said that's bad. Eh? Daddy 40. He said, no, 40. Who does 40? And I'm holding this, I'm holding microphone standing behind the pulpit. Don't take it easy. It takes a lion heart to get a lion share. Don't take it easy. Don't take it easy. Don't take it easy. You can't be sleeping when church is not growing. Don't take it easy. You cannot be sleeping when you ministered a whole service. No testimony. Don't take it easy. And you say, who has a testimony? Nobody stood up. Don't take it easy. Sunday to Sunday, month to month, no manifestation. Don't take it easy. React and rebel. Something has to be displaced. Satan has been standing on your right hand for too long. Satan! I was walking to this building when we were building the tent. And there was a child, a nine-year-old child that has never walked. He had polio. Okay, he walked when it was a couple of months. And he had polio and had never walked. The bones were twisted. The legs was curved. And I was entering to inspect what was going on. And the protocol were yeah, all over the mother, flinging her here and there. But she held on to that child. And as I was walking, the mother, as she was, she was on the floor, screaming, held the baby, the child. I said, what's the problem? He said, that is your son. Eh? My son. No, in this generation, you have to be careful. So I stopped. I said, My, I would, normally I would have just gone ahead. I had to define it because there are people standing around me. I said, my son, where, how? He said, that is your son, oh. My son? He said, yes, oh. Yes, oh. We are Omega children. Uh -huh. He said, they say your son has polio. They let her up. Grown up child. Looked at the bone and I carried the child. I said, This child does not have polio. I dropped the child, he started walking because I located it. I located it. I located it. I located. Do you know what the Bible says about faith? Have you read different translations on faith? Hebrews 11 1. Have you read the translations on faith? Hebrews 11 verse 1. Have you read that translation on faith? This is the King James. Go and bring all other translation. There is something I want to point out to somebody. Go and bring all other translation. Go and bring all other translations. Go. It says the fundamental fact of our existence is this. Is that this trust in God. The faith is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can see. Give me another translation. Give me another translation. Give me another translation. It says, now faith brings our hope into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire things we long for. Is the evidence of all the evidence required to prove what's still unseen. Give me another one. There is something I am looking for. Give me another one. Give me another one. There is something I'm looking for. Give me another one. Look at me. I got it. Now faith is the assurance. The title deed. The title deed. Do you know what a title deed is? When you buy a property, the title deed is the document that transfers that property from the name of the former owner to your name. It's so faith is the document that transfers from the spiritual into the physical and puts it in my hand. It's the title deed. So if you want a healing, you must get the document, the legal 
taken that puts your name on the property that puts your name on that thing you desire for faith is the substance the substance not the mere wish the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen for by it the elders obtained a good report through faith we understand that the world we are framed at the word of God so that things which we are seen are not made of things which do appear by faith Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain that which he had obtained the witness that he was righteous he said God testifying of his gift that he'd he been dead yet speaketh by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death for before his translation he had the testimony that he pleased God for without faith it's impossible to please God for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him by faith Noah be one of God of things not seen as yet move with fear and prepare an ark for the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and he became an heir of righteousness which is by faith by faith Abraham when he was called out to go into a place of promise he said you went out he saw John with Isaac and Jacob heirs of the same promise in a strange land he saved because he looked forward towards a city that had foundation which builder and maker is God by faith Sarah he said when she was past the age she received strength to conceive seed he said she and judge God faithful who has promised therefore sprang one even of him as good as dead as the stars of the skies in multitude and the sand of the seashore innumerable these all died in faith not having received the promise but they were persuaded and they that they were strangers and pilgrims of the earth they that said such thing declared plainly that they seek a city for if they have been mindful of the country from where they came they must have another opportunity to have returned for now they desire a country which is unheavenly wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God because he has prepared for them a city faith is the title deed is the document an encounter that sets me on the wavelength an encounter one time John G. Lake's wife his wife at the middle of the night woke up and saw the husband crying by the bed sobbing 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 you say why are you sobbing why are you sobbing my love why are you sobbing what has happened she said go back to bed he was crying he was weeping he was crying he said why are you sobbing he said ministry ministry the wife said but you are doing well he said you have five thousand members he said that is the problem i have five thousand members who majority of their problems i cannot solve i have five thousand members who majority of their needs i cannot meet i have five thousand members who some are not married i have five thousand members who some are jobless i have five thousand members who some have no babies i have five thousand members who some are losing their family i am crying that where is god empower me to solve their problems empower me to meet their needs it's not about having a crowd how many needs am i meeting how many of them are excited that i am solving their problems and I saw him praying and the Lord said to Satan the Lord rebuke you and the Lord said to Satan if you are under my ministration one of the problems you have with me if you are not deep you will just be lost I have a problem preaching to shallow people if you are not deep so I have a lot of problem people tell me apostle when you started you ended I didn't understand one thing you said I was just looking at you 
I said, because you have to be deep to understand. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you. It was Joshua who stood and was praying. But this time the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord said unto Satan, it was God telling Satan that God <laughs> mm. I know you just shouted but you didn't, you didn't get it who makes intercession for you 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 who make intercession for you the Holy Ghost the Lord said to Satan the Lord rebuke you when Joshua saw that Satan had stood on his right hand for too long how does he relocate the devil from that position he has occupied this long the Lord said to Satan the Lord rebuke you brother when you are confused and don't know what to do you switch to the Holy Ghost the Lord said to Satan the Lord sometimes you don't understand your problem so your problem should not understand your language the Lord Ilamashaka. the Lord said to Satan the Lord so at the highest level of prayer is praying in the Holy Ghost no wonder Paul said in first Corinthians 14 18 I speak in tongues more than ye all I speak in tongues more than ye all when you understand the importance of praying the Holy Ghost building yourself Jude verse 1 Jude verse 20 rather chapter 1 verse 20 building up yourself in your most holy faith praying the Lord it is the spirit that quickened it the flesh profited nothing Amaya Saka Lelo Tatari Kekurosha Iyata You cannot continue under the frequency of praying in the spirit and be bankrupt of encounter it's not possible you cannot continue for days and weeks and months on end day praying in the Holy Ghost and be bankrupt of encounter William Marum Braham I'm about to pray I want to pray there is power in this place William Marum Braham was a great man of God in the miraculous he died in the 60s 1960 something and this man was highly anointed of God forget about the teaching and all of that he was gifted of God so gifted and this man was moving the spirit one time T.L. Osborne had gone to India and to minister and for back months nothing was happening so he came back and he was told about a man who was in Phoenix Arizona who was used by God so he went there and sat in the crowd and some blind eyes open deaf ears on stop people come out of the wheelchair and T.L. Osborne began to cry and all that Bram was preaching was Jesus 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 you see that light on his head it was captured on camera it was not a camera light it was the angel the light is here on his head it was the angel that was not a mistake it was, it's not photoshop it was it, that's that's the angel take it off take it off that's that's the angelic light of god take it off that's the light the camera picked it and tl osborn got back home and told his wife I looked at him he had two hands I have two hands he had two legs I have two legs Jesus does not love him more than he loves me so why will he carry so much of God and I don't carry she, she took the key to the wife I'm gonna lock this door 
I will throw the key from underneath the door until I come out and tell you I have seen Jesus. Don't open the door. He began to pray. He began to pray. He began to pray. That is Tia Losban. Bring up Tia Losban. He began to pray. That is Tia Losban. He began to pray. And Jesus, after some days, appeared to him and gave him the same authority and screamed and told the wife, I have seen him. I have seen him. And the wife was excited. After a couple of days, the wife noticed anytime she come close to the husband, she's on the floor. Anytime she tried to interact, she's on the floor. And she said to the husband, I can't continue like this. This is the key. I am going into the room.